Hey, how you doing? This is Noel, and welcome to part two of the video tutorial for the typewriter effect After Effects template from Creation Effects. So there's a couple things that you'll need to do here to make your animation. Um, one is to animate the position of the carriage so that it moves with the paper to the left just a little bit each time a key is struck. With these types of typewriters, usually you would strike a key and the type bar would come and hit the paper and immediately after the uh, paper would move over to position itself for the next letter to be typed. So we'll do that and then the other thing is we'll have to um, move these key strike animations so that the uh, type bar hitting will sync up with the letter appearing. So let's get started. We'll go to that carriage control layer and I'm going to hit the P key to reveal our position property and then we'll need to um, find that first frame where a letter appears and it's somewhere in there. I can't see it because of these this key strike animation. So actually um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a guide in here. Um, if your ruler is not already showing you can do that with uh, command R on a Mac and uh, then we'll just drag guide and position it right in the middle and now I can hide these key strike animations um, so we can see our text more clearly okay and then you can use your page up and page down buttons to go frame by frame and find that first frame where a letter appears and once you do that you can hit your position keyframe and then you want to go over about two or three frames so page down and we'll want to move that carriage to the left and get it so that that guide is about in the middle of where your next character will be typed. And so there's some guessing involved here, but it's going to be around there. And uh, that creates a new keyframe. So uh, the next step will be to find where your next letter is typed. There it is. And then we'll just want to copy that last free keyframe. So we'll select it and then copy it and paste it to your current position. And then we'll just do the same thing and we'll do that for all of the letters. So go over three frames and move over and then copy that last keyframe. Go to your next letter and paste that keyframe. Go over three more frames and actually there's a space there so um, I'm gonna go forward a few spaces and create a new keyframe go over three more spaces and go over to where that next letter will be um, probably around there and there it is Ooh, good guess okay copy that last free keyframe and put it there Go over three frames, move down, okay. Now I'll hit the zero on my numpad and make sure that looks all right. Okay, that looks good. So the next step would be to sync up these key, stri these key strike animations with the uh, letters appearing on the paper. And you'll notice that there are seven different key strike animations. Each one has a different type bar that comes up. Um, I did that for variety uh, just to make it more realistic. And you should know that they are in order so that uh, key strike number one is the furthest left type bar and key strike number seven is the furthest right. And um, so you may not want them to go in that order. It might look funny. So uh, what you can do is just mix them up a little bit. And that looks good. And it's kind of hard to see again because of these key strike animations. So I'm going to bring my guide back. I got rid of that too soon. And now I can hide the key strike animations. 
So there's that first frame. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit here. And so the way that we know where to put this uh, key strike animation is by this marker here, which is the exact point where a type bar strikes the paper. So we want that to line up. The marker should line up with that first frame where a letter appears. Um, and actually, it might be easier to go to this carriage control layer and reveal the keyframes. So select the layer and hit the U key, and that'll show you the keyframes, and then you'll know exactly where to go. So there's the next one. I'll move that over to there and move this one over. And I'll just do that for the rest of them. Okay, we would be good to go, except uh, these shouldn't overlap. So, and there shouldn't be any space where you can't see an animation. Um, you don't want this in your in your final animation. So, um, we'll bring this one all the way to the beginning, and then we'll find the midway point between the two different uh, key strike animations, and we'll clip the end off of that one, and then clip the beginning off of this one, and we'll do that for the rest of the animations. And you can see if you scroll, if you scrub through to the end, um, you wouldn't be able to see any type bars there. So we'll move this, the end of that, all the way to the end of the comp. And uh, we can get rid of this guide now. And we'll reveal all of these layers. And uh, let's do a RAM preview and see what that looks like. Okay, so I skipped past the rendering, um, and this is the RAM preview. And that looks pretty good. So the only problem, of course, is the letters are still obscured um, by the, the guide here, the type bar guide. Uh, so you may want to animate the paper that, so that it uh, it scrolls up so you can see the letters. I'll just do that real quick so you can see how I would do it. Um, you just go to your last frame, or go to the end of your comp, um, and we're going to animate the paper this time, not the carriage. So reveal the, posi the position property for that layer, and we'll put a keyframe there. And we'll go forward about 10 keyframes, and we'll just move the whole paper up like this. And uh, you'll probably want a sound effect in there, and that brings us to this folder here, sound effects. Just open that up, and there's actually sound effects from three different typewriters. Uh, these two were both modern, more modern, if you can call a typewriter modern, and uh, this one is the older type, that's this one here, the older typewriter. So there's lots of sound effects. Uh, return button, that's the one we want for here. We'll just put that right there. You can hit the L, t the L key twice to reveal the, the waveform, and that'll give you an idea of where to put it. Let's shorten that so that it goes better with the length of the sound. Okay, and um, you might want to center it too. So we'll uh, put another position on the carriage control layer, another position keyframe there, and then go over a few frames, and we'll move this to the center. And let's put a, uh, a bell sound effect right there. And maybe the sound of a of the carriage sliding, carriage returning. So we'll put that. We'll put that with the bell. And then you should be good to go. You might want to use this global control layer to zoom in on your text. Well, let's put a uh, first put a keyframe there for the scale and position, and then we'll go to that last part and. We'll scale it to where we want, and we'll position it to where we want. And 
and um, we'll use easy ease, easy ease, just command click the keyframes. So that about does it. Uh, if you needed to put a, an extra line in there, um, that's not hard. You would just go back to your edit your text here comp and just duplicate it. And you can edit that to whatever you want your second line to be. And um, go back to your main comp and just put your, your second text comp. Uh, just put it right underneath your original text comp. And um, you can see this text comp is, this layer is parented to the paper layer. Here's the paper layer down here. So we want to do the same thing with the second layer. Not that one. N layer number 23. Make sure it's parented to this layer. And then also, if I open that up, you want to copy the, all the transform properties. Copy them, and then select the other text layer and paste them. And uh, you can see now it's exactly in the same position. Be sure that uh, motion blurring is on. So this one you would just animate. You would put it down here and just do the whole process over again. Um, just using your uh, carriage control layer and your paper control layer to animate the movement. One last thing to show you is just this, uh, let me close these. I'll show you the other typewriter, uh, what's different about this one. You'll notice that there's no carriage control layer because there's no carriage. So you can still control the uh, the position of the, the paper because you may want that to go up or down. But most of your, your animation will happen on this on this layer, which is the type bars control layer. And you can see that moves the type bar bars across. It's the same concept as before. Immediately after a letter appears, you will want to move that type bar down uh, just one letter's width. And uh, something I, sh I should also mention, uh, these key strike animations, you saw where they are up here, but you don't want to drag more from, from this folder down here because you're probably going to run out of, unless your your text is three characters long, you're going to run out of key strike animations. And what you'll want to do is just keep duplicating them uh, because these already have um, the transform properties uh, and the, uh, you know, it's already parented to this layer. So to keep all that information, just duplicate the layers that are already in here. Same thing goes for this for this comp. Um, if you need more key strike animations, you just duplicate these and move the duplicates down here. And uh, I think that's it. So uh, good luck on your animation.